Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today you guys voted for the Super Tools tutorial so I am going to be showcasing how I was able to do this. There is three different types of tools. There is a pickaxe, shovel, and axe that I have all set up for detecting particular blocks and stuff like that. So it's all pre-coded and the example will be on my website so you guys can get that. We'll start with the axe because uh, why not and if you right click on the block then it will mine a three by three area around the block that you right click on if i were to click on the center block right here it will actually go one block above as well if we were to mine again it's only going to mine two and if we mine again it's only going to mine two above but it's doing a three by three area now that can be adjusted if you want to do a larger selection with the shovel same thing uh, pretty much the same code only difference is it's detecting for soil type blocks things like grass dirt gravel sand things like that if we right click on it it's going to mine out that area right click on there as you can see it does a whole cube around here with the pickaxe exact same thing just stone it's also detecting if there is bedrock if it's if there is bedrock then it won't mine it and it does deal damage to your tool as well so if we right click on that as you can see we can mine up all this area here we can grab a whole bunch of resources that we might need and um yeah, that's basically all it. So let's uh, hop into Mcrater. Okay, so we're now in Mcrater and we're going to just take a look at the axe. Uh, there is one procedure for the axe and there is one uh, item for the axe as well. So we want to select our texture, set the properties to make it sure it's, the type is set to uh, special. This is just so it basically functions as a special tool. And then we're setting the harvest level to zero and the efficiency to zero and the enchantability to zero. The attack speed is set to one. The damage versus mob is set to four, which is two full hearts. And then we're setting the amount of times the item could be used. Uh, lastly, what we're doing is we're setting the repair item. This will be used to repair the item in the anvil. And if we move over to procedures, this is where our procedure is located. It is uh, when right clicked on block and then the hand location. So if we open this up, there is some things happening right here. So the only difference between the this procedure for the ax and the other two tools is the materials. Everything else is the exact same. So when you actually fill it out the only thing that you really need to worry about is the materials and if you want to customize the size of the actual mining area the only thing that needs to be uh, remembered is these numbers here for the repeater have to be uneven numbers so if you increase this by five or by uh, two to make it even even so from three to five then you have to set this to two now if you wanted to set this to seven then you're offsetting this to negative three. So that will be negative three, that will be seven. So for this example, we're just gonna use three. This will do a, a basically a three by three by three area around the block that is being right clicked on. So with the materials, they're a little bit hard to explain, so I will Go to Minecraft Wiki and I'll show you how that all works out. So Minecraft materials, and there should be this wiki right here. So if we scroll down to the bottom, it will list all the items or blocks, pardon me, that are in the materials tab for that particular block. Uh, on the left hand, or yeah, on the left hand side, there is. Um, all the different types of names for these. Sometimes they don't match with the Emperor ones. You just kind of have to guess around and play around with it. But I've programmed it all in. So what I've done is I've basically used the material type for the block and I've basically detected what blocks can be basically mined with those. 
so I wouldn't have to program each individual block in. This also makes it cross mod compatible and it saves a lot more time as well and space for procedures. So to find that, uh, what you need to do is you need to go to your block and then scroll down where it says uh, is and then the empty space and then material type and then the material one set. So with that, uh, what we're doing is we're testing if the entity or the provided item is basically in the player's main hand. If that's true, then we're testing for the current location if it's of any of the material that we can actually mine with and we're using or statements to test for any of these so these also have to be set to true and if that's true then what we're doing is we're going to swing the right uh, swing the main hand of the current entity and then we're setting the coordinates of a local variable so the local variable we need uh, pause x for the first one pause Y for the second one and pause Z for the third one. And what this is going to do is allow us to temporarily store a variable uh, for this particular uh, procedure. And it will it'll, uh, erase after it's finished running the procedure. So it's just temporarily stored. After we set the local variables, we need to set X equal to negative one, Y negative one, and Z negative one. So basically that will determine the offset of how many blocks we need to go back in the opposite direction. Again, I already explained that if you increase this by phi or like set it to the next uneven number, this needs to go up by one number. This would become two, seven would become three, uh, nine would become four and so on. So because it's uh, three, what we're doing is we're creating a repeater that will test for a cubic area. Uh, we can do this by putting three repeaters in to each other. If I minimize this, you can see that what it's basically doing is it's repeating times, but inside the repeater that's repeating three times, it's also repeating three times. And then what's inside that repeater is also repeating three times. So the the, the inner one basically offsets the Z coordinates to plus the actual variable plus variable plus one. So it's basically increasing the number of the Z variable plus one every time this is run. So this runs three times, this increases three times. So it's gonna be a three direction on the X um, coordinate. After this one's finished running, what this is going to do is it's going to run this particular section here. So we're going to be needing to reset the variable, which uh, we've basically assigned it to here. So we're just going to copy this, paste that here, and then we're going to increase X, uh, very similar to the same way we did with uh, the Z coordinates. And when this is finished increasing, it's also going to run this again. So because this is running three times, we've already run this three times, this is gonna run three times still, that's gonna run three times again, and it's just gonna repeat this until this one runs out. And then after this one runs out, it's going to clear both X and Z and then increase Y by one. So this is gonna also repeat three times, which will repeat three times, which will repeat three times. And anything in the inner inner repeater which uh, is above the local variable X will be running each time. So this will run for each block inside the 3x3 three three area. So what we're doing with this is we're basically testing if the item has a MBT tag of stop mining and is equal to false. If this is true, then we're testing for the material. And if that's still true, then what we're gonna do is we'll remove the block and then drop the block at the same location as the position. So the positions that we set up here are going to be the variables that we set for the X, Y, and Z. If the player is not in creative, then we're going to be damaging the item and this will damage it each time the block is actually mined. So every block that is a 
available to being broken with the proper conditions, it's going to deal damage. If the damage equals zero, then what we're doing is we're playing the sound of, and this should be the tool break, uh, for some reason it reset, I'll have to fix that. Uh, when the, the tool basically breaks, the, the, it plays that kind of twang sound of the tool breaking. This is the sound that we're going to be using. And then what we're doing is we're removing the item from the provided inventory. Then this is only if the uh, item is basically um, broken. So if it, it has a durability of zero, it will, this only this will run. Else it's just going to basically deal damage to it. And then it's also going to set the stop mining of the provided item, which will cancel this whole procedure out after it has broken. So after that, that's all there is to it. Pretty straightforward stuff. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.